Now for most users, the Elemental Pro Forms widget does everything that you need, but it does have one limitation. You can't really do much to make those emails that you send look nice for the recipient. Well, that is until now. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Elemailer Lite, a free plugin that makes it incredibly easy to create unique emails and send them via your Elemental Forms widget. So if you're ready to up your email game, let's open up our website and get started creating our first custom email template. So the first thing you're going to want to do is search for Ellie Mailer Lite, go ahead, install and activate that. I've already done that and we're ready to go. Next thing I want to do is go into the new entry for Ellie Mailer and we're going to open that up. Inside here, it'll show us all of the different templates we created for our emails. Now with the light version or the free version of this plugin, you can only use three templates. If you want more than that, then the pro version may be something you want to take a look at. For most use cases though, three is probably more than enough. I've already created one as a test, but we're going to create a completely new one right now. So let's click add new. We can give this a name. So we'll just call this test forms template and we'll hit edit with Elementor. That will then create the blank template for our email. Now, if we take a look on the left hand side, you can see we've got some very familiar widget types, things like headings, images, video buttons, and so on. So these are tools specific to creating the template that we want. Now, the free version gives us some really useful features like headings and images and so on. But we've also got the option to drop in short code so we can drop in and include custom information. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. But we've also got some features that I quite like, the latest posts and selected posts. This allows us to very easily create a mailer we can send out to people when they sign up, letting them know about the new content that's listed on our site or selected posts that we might want to give them information on. So it's good to see that side of things. So let's go ahead and create a really simple email. Now, obviously you could use any of the widgets inside you to create something more comprehensive, but once you've seen the basics, you can go for it and do whatever you want, create whatever you want. So let's start off by dropping in an image. We'll pop that into the top center and we're going to go ahead and use the tools we are already familiar with. We'll click to choose an image. We can then choose anything from our media library, upload images, or depending upon what kind of theme you're using, you may have access to free images. I'm using Astra and that's one of the options that gives us. So now I can go ahead and find an image that I think is going to be in keeping. We'll choose this option. We'll click insert media and there's our image at the top. We can now control the width of this if you want to, the alignment, and for some odd reason where I've tested this out, the icons are not showing up. So this could be a little bit of a quirk with either using a Mac, or it could be a quirk with the actual plugin itself. If you want to assign a link to this, you can do that. So you can say a custom URL and drop in a link. So this could be a link back to your homepage, anything like that. I'm going to set that back to be none for now. You can hop over to style and then you can adjust things like the margin, paddings, background color, background type, and so on. So leave that as it is. We'll then just come back over and we're going to say we want to drop in just a little heading section. We'll drop that underneath there and we can now drop our heading in. So I'll just put a really simple welcome message inside there. And now I can go ahead and drop over to the styling section and I can go ahead and just adjust the colors and the font size and the line height. If we come into advanced styles, you can see we've got the same options for the margin, padding, background type, and so on. Now at the moment, this is kind of limited. So I'd like to see some more options available inside you for the styling, but we are kind of limited for various different reasons. One of the key ones is when you send emails out, we don't have anywhere near as many options as we would for displaying content online. So bear that in mind, there are gonna be limitations to what email clients will read and display correctly. Okay, so once we've done that, let's just go ahead and drop in an additional widget. We're gonna say we're gonna pop in our latest posts. We'll drop that underneath there, and that will then go ahead and pull in our latest posts, as his name suggests. Now, we've also got more options available. If we come over to the left-hand side, you can see under content, we can choose the type of post we want to display. By default, post is selected, but we can choose pages, landing pages, products if we have WooCommerce installed, or custom post types if you're using those. We'll leave the set to posts. If you want to change the taxonomy, you can do that inside here. So we can set things like category and post tags and so on. Hop into settings and you can see we can now control the number of posts per page, the number of rows, those kinds of things. Let's set this to be something like two. And we're going to go ahead and change this to be two posts per row. You can see that now gives us a nice side by side layout. We can go ahead then adjust the ordering to set that to ascending or descending and how we want to order those things like date, title and so on. If we come into layout, you can see this is where we control whether we want to show or hide the thumbnail. We can also go ahead and set the actual resolution of the thumbnail to make sure that looks as good as possible without being massive. We can adjust the width, 
disable or enable the title, excerpt, the excerpt length, read more options, and the alignment options as well. So let's go ahead now and add a couple more pieces into our email and then let's test these things out. So let's say we want to drop in some social information underneath there so people can share this or join us on our own social media. We'll set that to be aligned to the center. If we want to control the styling, we can do that on here as well. So let's make those just a little bit smaller. And if you want to, you can add additional items or take away anything that you don't want and change the icon style itself. Finally, let's just go ahead and drop a footer in where we can put information about subscribing, unsubscribing and so on. You can see we've got a normal address box inside here, which we can fill out whatever we want inside there. And I'm going to leave it as it is for now. Subscription option allows you to set up things to like to manage the unsubscribe, the subscription and so on. So pretty cool. Got the style. We can style that. So we've now created the email that we want to use, or at least the basics of an email we want to use. Let's click update and that'll save the template. So now we can go ahead and tell Elementor to use this template when we send an email out. Now into my pages section of my website, I've already created a contact page with a simple contact form on it. So once we open up our page ready to edit, let's find the form. I'll select that and as you can see, this is just the default form with a normal placeholder's name, email and message and so on. We need to make sure of one important key factor. Actions after submit has to have either the email or the email to inserted into it because this is where we're going to use that template. Once you do that, you'll get the email or email to section open up and allow us to configure things. Let's open that up and you can see we can go ahead now, fill out any information we want inside here, including the from email, the reply to and so on. If you want to add any metadata in, you can drop that inside there as well and choose from various different things like the date and time and so on. Next up, we're going to make sure we've got this set to send as HTML and you'll see we've got a new option called use email alight. All we need to do is enable this and then choose the template that we want from those three templates we've created. So you can see there's our test forms template we've just created. We'll select that from there and we'll simply hit update. So in essence, that's our form created set up to use the template. Let's go ahead and preview this and test it out to make sure that everything is working. So let's go ahead and just fill this information out. I'm not going to bother putting a message in because at the moment we don't have any dynamic information being transferred over. So I'm simply going to drop in my name and my email address so we can complete the form. We'll hit send and our form is now being sent successfully. So let's give it a second or two and go and check this out inside our email software. And here we go. There's our email. And you can see all of the information is supplied inside there directly from Elementor. But we could just as easily create any other kind of email and include dynamic information pulled in from our form. So let's see how we can update things now to personalize this just a little bit more. Okay, so we're back into Elementor. Let's go back to our form fields this time. And inside there, there's all of the different fields that make up our contact form. Let's expand this out and jump over to the advanced section. Inside there, you can see we've got a short code. And each and every field inside your form has a unique shortcode. And we can use those inside any mailers templates. So first of all, let's personalize this with the actual subscriber's name. What we're going to do is we're going to grab this shortcode. We're going to copy that from there. We're going to hop back over into Ellie Mailer. And where we've got this section, this welcome, let's remove that. And let's just simply drop a new shortcode section inside there. We'll place that in the same position. And you can see this pre-fills out and says label. We don't need to have a label inside there. We can simply remove that. However, if you want to just list things out like name, so on, you could drop a label in if you wanted to. We're going to use the short code section and we're just going to put in, hey, as a welcome. Then we're simply going to drop in that short code, which is the field ID name. And we're going to say welcome to our newsletter. And there we go. So we've now included some dynamic information pulled in from our form. We can go ahead and add more of this if we wanted to. So for example, if you wanted to include the email or message or anything like that, you'd simply come back over into Elementor, go to the form field that you want to grab the information from, hop over to advanced and simply copy out this short code and then go back into Ellie Mailer and use the short code widget and drop in the short code inside there. And that information will be included inside the email that's being sent. So again, let's go ahead and test this out. We'll update this. We'll open up our website with our form on it and we'll go ahead and fill out the information again. Once we've done that, we'll click on send and there's our form sent. Now let's check our email inbox and take a look at what we've received. And there we go. There's our new email with our personalization in place. Now this is a really simple example of what you could do with this. There's lots of use cases, but this opens up a lot more possibilities with the Elementor form. Just gives us a much more unique way of customizing things. 
So Anymail Alight is an interesting plugin that opens up a lot of possibilities to create more interesting and unique emails using those familiar Elementor style tools. While the Lite version has some limitations in comparison to the recently released premium version, I do think that it covers enough bases that most users will be satisfied with those available features. So the main limitation for some may be that the number of email templates provided, the Lite version only allows you to have up to three. If this is you and you need more, then the premium version may be a perfect option. You may want to check that out for yourself. So for me, the pros of this free version, the free plugin provides enough features for many, many use cases. It's relatively easy to use. It uses a familiar Elementor interface and it integrates easily into your Elementor forms functions. There are a couple of cons though. Minimal control over the container styling. It does seem at sometimes a little bit flaky with different server setups with no error to help you fault find. Now I have two different setups that I could not get this to work and send the email out. It lacks granular styling options, for example, the column spacing on the post widget. There are some interface glitches, those missing alignment icons we saw earlier on. So my overall score for Ellie Mail and Lite, it gets an eight out of 10 for ease of use. Pricing, eight out of 10 again, being free, and the feature set is pretty solid. The features, seven out of 10, giving us a final score of 23 out of 30. So if you want to find out more about Ellie Mail and Lite or the Pro version, the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.